So my name is Nicholas Negroponte. Um, I'm the founder of the Media Lab, but more importantly, um, I knew Seymour 50 years ago. I was a new professor at MIT, and he was also new. He's older than me, but he had come to MIT about that same time. And we became very good friends over cooking. That's what we did. We cooked together. We did that for about 12 years, maybe even as much as two or three times a month. And because of Seymour and Marvin Minsky's fame, we always had famous people come to dinner. And about 1982, we started working together, just before the Media Lab, implementing some of his ideas in Africa because the French government had funded a center to help leapfrog development without going through the stage of building roads and pouring concrete, but to perhaps have children learn in new ways. And Seymour, was timing was perfect. He had just published Mindstorms. And the whole notion of using computer programming as a simulation of thinking and debugging as an approximation of learning, perfect timing. So we did that, and I was sort of the person that wore the suit and would get to the meeting on time. He'd never be on time. He'd sometimes forget. And Seymour's mind was so different. It worked in riddles. He would ask things like, how do giraffes sleep? He would ask questions about things that you took for granted and then you realized you didn't really know. And that was the beauty of Seymour's mind. One of the reasons we got to work together and we found it so easy is that I was trained as an architect, not as a mathematician. And I learned in a studio. And I learned through designing and making. And so in our friendship, I brought that approach to the computer, which we were all doing. We were all writing computer programs. And the one story I think characterizes Seymour is that he and Alan Kay were flying to France overnight to come to the center we had created for computation in developing countries. Seymour and Alan go to the airport. They get on the airplane at Kennedy Airport. The plane pulls away from the jetway, and Seymour breaks out in a sweat. And Seymour says, oh my god, I've got to turn the plane back. We've got to get the plane to go back. So a steward gets worried. The captain sort of says, you can't, sir. You've got to calm down. We're taking off. And Alan looks at Seymour and says, Seymour, what's wrong? And he said, I left Sherry on 57th and Madison. He'd forgotten his wife. And that's the story of Seymour's life. He was not like you and me that would remember things and operate normally. He would operate abnormally but always, insightfully, every time you had a problem, he could see it from a meta level. Any time there was an issue, even if he came to the meeting late, he would be bugging.